Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeff. If you're a Christian entrepreneur like me, you know how important it is to build our businesses on the foundation of God's word. That's why I wrote my new devotional, Navigating Entrepreneurship Through the Lens of Scripture, a 30-day journey for Christian entrepreneurs. And I wanted to let you know that it's now available on Amazon. And you can also check it out at navigatingbiblicalentrepreneurship.com forward slash devotional. All right. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Business God's Way podcast. Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to those who have taken the time to leave a review and rate this show. I really appreciate that. That's how the show gets spread throughout the internets, and it means a lot to me for um, those reviews and those ratings because it helps keep this show going and it helps to spread the word. So I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you for that. Really appreciate it. And now it's time to get into the program. And welcome to the Business God's Way podcast. My name is Jeff Elder and I equip kingdom-focused entrepreneurs to build prosperous businesses for the purpose of advancing God's kingdom in the marketplace. Each week, you're going to learn actionable strategies and tips to help you build and grow your business God's way. So you can truly become a kingdom-focused entrepreneur with impact. And hey, we just might have a little fun along the way. Let's dive in. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you for joining me on the Business God's Way podcast. My name is Jeff Elder, and I am the host. As always, I appreciate you listening in to these episodes. I know there are a lot of podcasts out there to choose from, so I'm very grateful that you have chosen to listen in to this one. You know, my my deepest prayer for this podcast is that it would be an encouragement to Christian entrepreneurs to continue to do what they are doing, to continue to build and grow their business, to bring God into that business so that they can have the impact that they so desire to have. And and that's really the, the heart behind this podcast is to to bring episodes that would not only encourage, but inspire and also provide some tips and strategies for how to actually grow and scale your business. So I really do appreciate uh, you taking the time to listen. And I would appreciate if you know anybody that would benefit from this podcast, go ahead and share it with them. Spread the love, right? So today I want to I want to talk about the third component of the the kingdom business formula. And we are in a four part series right now where we are actually going through uh, this formula that I created called the kingdom business formula. This is episode 3 in that part in that four part series. And I just want to recap the first two episodes uh, in this series for you guys. So the the first step in the formula has to do with God's vision for business. And we talked about how at the core of our vision for our business, having a God focused vision is all about the gospel. It's all about being gospel centric. I believe that God has called us into business for the purpose of the gospel. And that is the first and foremost priority of our business as Christian entrepreneurs. That is God's vision. And that is the vision that we need to chase after, we need to run after, we need to embrace, and we need to actually live out in our business. The second step of the formula is all about impact, right? So the vision is about the gospel, and each one of us, God has called us to make a specific impact because we have all been created 
uniquely. We have all been given an assignment by God. And for some of us, that assignment is our business. For others, our business is just a vehicle to make the impact that we believe God wants us to have. But either way, we need to know what that impact is. We need to pray about it. We need to know what it is that we believe God is calling us to do. Uh, Then we need to actually build a strategy so that we can have the impact that God wants us to have. So those are the first two steps of the kingdom business formula. Today, I want to talk about this whole idea of business strategy, which is the third step in the the framework. And today's going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to get into the the tactics yet of some of the some of the strategies that we implement into our business to help us grow, to help us scale, you know, things like sales and marketing and customer support and processes, uh, procedures, policies, all that stuff. That that will come later, and I will do episodes on those individual tactics that I believe are important to help grow and scale a business. But today, I, I want to take a step back, and I want us to to put this whole topic of business strategy inside of a framework. Because I, I believe that as, as Christian entrepreneurs, one of the ways that we do business God's way when it comes to business strategy has to do with this whole topic of service. Service. Anything we do in our business strategy needs to have this idea of service. And I want to, I want to read a verse for you, Mark 10 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And I love this verse because it's telling us that that when Jesus came to this earth, his, his desire was that he would be the one serving people. He didn't come for people to serve him. Rather, he came to serve people. And he took that to the next level where that service for other people actually cost him his life, right? He became a ransom for our sin so that we can be reconciled back to God. And I love this because this gets us right back to the whole heart of the gospel in business. One of the ways that we can spread the gospel in our business is through the act of service. And I really like this idea, and I I really think we need to think through this concept before we even start laying out our business strategy I think we need to start thinking about it from this idea of service. And I believe serving and service should be the core of all of our business strategies, of all of our business processes, of all of our business procedures and products. It should be the foundation for our customer service. It should be the foundation for how how we market and sell our products and services. It should be the foundation of, of how we build, lead, and assemble teams within our organization. It should be the core of leadership. We as business owners, we need to be serving those within our business and those outside those who come to us to hire us for our products and service and services. So we need to have this, this service mentality. We need to serve. And I believe that when we come to building our business strategies with this foundation of service, I think that's when radical transformation happens. I think that's when we start to build businesses 
that truly can have a kingdom impact. And and I believe that when we build our business strategy on the foundation of of serving others, I think it does some of the following things. It encourages us to create products and services that change lives. Think about that. How does your product or service change the lives of those you're trying to serve? How does it make their life better? Does it make their life better? Have you ever thought about your product or service from that angle before? How is it making a difference? How are you serving your clients in a way that is gospel focused through your products and services? Have you thought about that? Let me give you an example of, of how this could play out. Early on in in my first business, we got a lot of compliments about the products and services that we that we were delivering. And we we did it in such a way that that people would often ask me, you know, why why are you guys different? And and they let us know that what we delivered to them made their life better. It made it easier. It made it so that they were actually going to be able to implement the product that we delivered. Back then, it, it was websites, and they were truly happy that that we delivered that, that that product at such a high level. And it it set us apart. It made us different. But we really came out those projects with this whole attitude of, of how can we serve through this website that we're creating? How is it going to make our clients' lives better? And because of how we approach that, I would often get into gospel-focused conversations with people just because they saw that I had such a passion for my product and service. Because because our clients knew that we were serving them by doing that. Okay, another thing that that this does is it creates better customer support, which creates happy customers. Think about that. If if, if our customer support is wrapped around this concept of serving, it's gonna create happier clients, happier customers. Because we're treating them well, we're loving them, we're serving them, we're supporting them, and we're doing it from a Christ-centered perspective. And that gives us a lot of opportunities for the gospel. It gives us a lot of opportunities for the gospel and just how we treat people. Again, I I would have conversations with clients and prospects Because, again, they saw that that we were different. They saw that we cared about them. We cared about their business. We wanted to listen to them. We wanted to hear what their challenges were so that we could best serve them. Another thing this does is it builds morale within your organization, right? If you're building procedures and policies with the mindset of service, then that means those within your organization are gonna be taken care of. They're gonna feel loved and embraced and welcomed. And when you serve them as a business owner in a way that Christ served, it can't, I mean, there's no other outcome when that happens other than a team that has high morale a team that loves to come to work every day. So this this idea of servanthood really can turn your business around from the inside. And the result of that is when that happens internally, what happens is it tends to overflow outwardly. And uh, then your business becomes a model. It becomes attractive to people because you, you're serving those within your organization to the point where they are really happy about their jobs and they are coming out and, and actually going over and above to serve your clients well. 
Another thing this does is in your sales and marketing, it makes it more human, right? It makes your sales and marketing a lot more human. And to be honest, there's a lot of sales and marketing tactics out there that are just turn a lot of people off. Let's just be honest. It turns a lot of people off. But when you can when you can think about your sales and marketing from a service perspective, it changes everything. It actually makes your prospects feel like you really do care about them, that you really do care about their success, that you care about your products and services, right? They see that you have a passion about it. And so when you come at it from a servant's heart, your sales and marketing is going to be so much different than others out there. And that's a huge, huge benefit. And at the end of the day, all of this, all of this opens the door for the gospel, right? I mean, if we look at the life of, of Christ, think about it. When we read Christ about Christ's ministry, it's interesting that before he even opened his mouth to speak, a lot of times he served people, right? We see that in, in the feeding of the 5,000, Right, we see that Jesus serves first, uh, then he teaches them. He sets the example, uh, then he teaches them what he wanted them to hear. And I think that's the mentality that we need to bring into our business strategy. Right, and that's why service is so huge because if we serve both those inside and outside of our organization, of our businesses, we are setting an example. We are 11 people to the point where the gospel at some point will absolutely come to the surface and you will have gospel-centered conversations. And I've seen this happen in my own business. And look, I'm far from perfect. You know, I've made some mistakes, but at the heart of what I do, I really do care about my clients. I really do care that I provide a great experience for them. I care that I provide something that can help solve their problems. And I, I come at it from, you know, what would Jesus do in this situation? How would Jesus handle this situation? How would Jesus love this person? How would Jesus serve this person? And I set myself apart that way. And it has definitely opened a lot of doors to a lot of conversations. And all I did was serve. All I did was ask God to help me serve these people. And there were a lot of gospel-centric conversations that happened from a, um, as a result of that. So this is why this is so passionate to me. This is why I, I think... Again, before we get into the specifics, the tactics of sales and marketing and, and growing a team and building a team and how to create uh, processes and, and procedures and policies, I, I think we needed to step back and really come at it from this idea of a servant attitude and then develop those things out from a foundation of servanthood. And I really do think that when we do this, we will be different. We will be set apart. We will be a business that is known for our love for people, our passion, and just treating people the way that they want to be treated. And so doing business God's way means that when it comes to building our strategy, we are always thinking about how we can better serve those within and outside our business. That's it. That That's the foundation. That's the mindset we need to have. And I want to repeat that again. Doing business God's way means that when it comes to building our strategy, we are always thinking about how we can better serve those within and outside our business. Now, I'm going to be really honest here. This is not always an easy thing to do. To be 
to be frank, one of the reasons it's not easy is because we just don't think that way, right? We are just busy writing our policies, writing our procedures, doing sales, doing marketing, doing all the things that we do in business to grow it, to sustain it, to grow revenue, to do all the things we need to do in the business and for the business that we just haven't learned how to put service and serving in front of all this. And so what I want to challenge you to do is I want you to to go back and I want you to look at all the things that you're doing in your business. And I want you to ask yourself this question. When I read this policy or this procedure, or when I look at my sales process, or I look at my marketing materials, do I feel like I'm serving people? Does this feel like service? And if it doesn't, go back and figure out how can I change this so that service is what always comes to the surface. And it's going to require some work to do that. But I believe the effort that you put in to make that happen is going to be well worth it. Why? Because I believe that if we follow the flow that we've, that we've created so far, we go from vision to impact to having a servant's attitude when it comes to our business strategy, it all goes back to the gospel. And I believe that when we make our business gospel-centric, God will bless it. God will bless it. Now, how he blesses it, that's up to him. But I believe that in his way, he will bless it. Because we are making it all about him. We are making it all about the gospel. So we have a gospel-centric vision for our business, which leads us to have a gospel-centric impact, which means that we put that gospel-centric focus in the way of serving inside of our business strategy And I believe that is the secret to success, that that is the key to building a kingdom-focused business, and that is the way that God wants us to do business His way. So I hope this is helpful. I hope that this generated some some thoughts and some light bulbs going off and, and really challenge you to think through this and to figure out how do I do this. And I'd love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, I'd love to answer some of your questions as well. And so if you have any questions or, or you have comments or maybe I sparked some ideas or, or some, uh, maybe you, you're struggling with some of this, I want to invite you to, to go ahead and, and send me a message over on Instagram. You can reach me over there at jeldrea is my handle on Instagram. Go ahead and DM me with your questions or comments or feedback. Let me know what this episode did for you. Did it help? Did it cause you to think differently about your business strategy? Um, I really hope it it did. And like I said, I know this was a little bit different um, about talking about business strategy, And I will be doing future episodes um, that get more tactical around some of these um, some of these strategies that I believe um, every business should have in order to grow and uh, to be successful. And we will be having those episodes coming up. But I just felt like I needed to to take a step back and really look at this topic from from um, the, the idea of of service. Okay, so let's rethink how we approach the topic of business strategy. We need to look at it from the viewpoint of serving with the end goal of the gospel. Because when we do this, this is when we can really start to make a kingdom impact. And like I said, this is how we do business God's way. 
All right, guys, that's the end of this episode. Like I said, I hope it was helpful. And again, I just want to remind you, if this episode was helpful and you're liking the podcast so far, I want to invite you to to go um, leave a review, rate the show. That helps me um, keep this podcast going. And on next week's episode, we are going to look at the final element of the Kingdom Business Formula, which is going to be all around the idea of mindset. And we're going to talk about some of the most common mindset uh, t- uh, mindset issues that keep us stuck, keep us from moving forward, and how we can biblically um, address some of those mindsets. All right, guys, that's all for today. I appreciate you listening in. And until next week, continue to do business God's way. Bye-bye. And that does it for today's show. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I want to invite you to leave a review for this podcast because that's how we get the news out and this podcast into the hands of other Kingdompreneurs just like yourself. If you have any questions or feedback on any of these episodes, I'd love to connect with you over on Instagram. You can find me there at Jeff Elder BGW. Until next time, continue to do business God's way. Thank you.